Hello, everyone. Thank you all for joining us this afternoon. We have an exciting announcement to make, and then we'll have the pleasure of a guided tour of the National Arts Club's first ever online exhibition of Century of American Landscape Art by our, by our own inimitable Robert Yonner, curator and registrar for the club. My name is David Doty, and I have the honor of serving on the Board of Governors at the National Arts Club. And today we are excited to announce that Google has generously donated its time, its expertise and its resources to digitize 67 works from our permanent collection. The artworks will now be available on Google's Arts and Culture app and website, making our fine artistic assets available to our members and to a worldwide audience 24 seven. Please join me in thanking Google and especially the arts and culture team expressly Simon de la Croix, Alec Racinos and David Jaranilla who, for their commitment to making our collection a new dimension of the ever more digital world. I believe they are listening in, so thank you again. I encourage everyone who has joined us today to download the app or go online to interact with the artwork uh, and we'll be sending, uh, we'll be sharing a, a link right after, right after this program so you can do that. I'd also like to recognize the curatorial committee of the National Arts Club for its invaluable support of this program. The committee members are Nicholas Lowry, who's uh, chair, and he's also a member of the Board of Governors. Alice Palmisano is a member of the Board of Governors as well. Thomas Ashton, Babette Block, Peggy Kinsler, Cherry Provost, Robert Seifert, and Martina Yeman. Adding to our program today, we have with us some of our elected representatives who have shown their support of arts in the city, their citizens' access to arts, and particularly, they've been helpful to the club in many ways. I know that listening in is Eric Botcher, who is running for a city council seat. And Eric has been a friend of the club for a long time, and he is presently the chief of staff to Corey Johnson, speaker of the New York City Council. And with us in a couple of minutes, to say a few words are two people who represent the district in which falls the National Arts Club. New York State Assembly Member Harvey Epstein, 74th District, and New York City Council Member Carlina Rivera, District 2. Harvey? Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for including us and thank you for letting us speak at the top of this event. And I want to just give a shout out to my councilwoman who is a dear friend and an ally and has been so important on so many of these issues that we're dealing with every single day. Uh, Carlina, thank you for all you do and, and your friendship and leadership for our community. And, and Ben, thank you for letting us take a moment to, to, to really applaud the work that the National Arts Club is doing during these uh, really difficult times. And, and we're living through a pandemic and we're living through so much. It's really lovely to see you doing so much great work and outreach to the community, to local children who unfortunately have to be in foster care during this moment and to, and to the network itself. And just this partnership that getting some of this work online and available and accessible is amazing. The idea that, that the work that you have and the ability that will be available to so many people, not just in our community, you can walk into the facility, but around the country is, a, is an amazing tribute to your leadership and your work. So I, I applaud that. I applaud the efforts that you're trying to do to expand the reach of the National Arts Club and expand the reach of your work. And I look forward to our continued partnership, knowing that we don't know what tomorrow really has to bring for any of us, unfortunately. We don't know what this all looks like, but we all know that arts is a critical part of what, what our future has to look like. And that, you know, making sure that we continue to prioritize the arts, prioritize what your work is, and understand that people have this part of their lives is really critical as we move forward. So thank you again, and thank you for letting me uh, speak to the audience and speak to you, and I look forward to moving forward together. Thank you so much, Harvey. Uh, for, for, for those words, and also uh, for your generous support of the club, uh, I think you're right on target when you say that the arts are important to, uh, to, the, to the soul of us all. And certainly that's where we have all turned 
during these difficult times, uh, more and more people are turning more and more to the arts. So thank you for that. Carlina, could you, uh, could you join us and say a few words, please? Absolutely, David, thank you so much. Thanks to uh, everyone uh, for being here. Good afternoon. I'm council member Carlina Rivera. I'm very proud to represent District 2, which is home to the National Arts Club. Uh, I wanna thank the, the Board of Governors and the staff for all of the amazing work that you do to, to make this institution such a wonderful place to visit. I've been many, many times uh, for exhibits to support friends, um, to really just enjoy the institution itself, which is such a lovely, beloved place. It's a, such a gem in our city and I wanna make sure that we continue to support it. And some of the innovative, fun, classic, and I think really, really treasured programming that so many people look forward to at, at this really special place. So I'm excited to join you today. I know there's a, a, a launch of the partnership between the National Arts Club and Google. I know New Yorkers and people from around the world are gonna appreciate the ability to access all of the artwork on display in a virtual exhibition. So as we're moving towards more virtual experiences, I can tell you how, how excited I am that, um, that art and culture is gonna be such a critical piece of this kind of recovery and wellness and just overall making sure that occasionally we can think about all, all the good and, and, and how art can really act as a therapy as well. I miss museums, I, I miss galleries, I, I miss creative spaces, just like so many of you do. And it's part of what I think makes our district and New York City so, so special. So I've always fought to make sure that the council, the New York City Council's budget also uh, preserves our art and creative spaces, whether it's the National Arts Club or even Fourth Arts Block on East 4th Street, which is a very special place because I know when we lose um, any of these institutions, no matter how small or large, it's, it's a little piece of like New York City soul, right? In our heart. And it limits our possibility to dream and, and to envision a better world. And art is such a universal language that allows us to be, to create a vision for hyper-local and even uh, national and global spaces. So it's really, really important to just our DNA. So, but you know, even in dark moments, and I know that I'm working very closely with so many people in the district, including our assembly member, Harvey Epstein, who has been an incredible partner. Um, you know, efforts like this show us exactly how we can think creatively during the pandemic to ensure that artistic endeavors remain accessible to everyone. And so I wanna just tell every, every single person who is viewing, who is a part of this, thank you. Um, have a great evening. And I'm just so proud, privileged, and honor, honored to be a representative of this amazing district, but also to be a fellow New Yorker just like you. Thank you so much for your contribution and enjoy your evening. Thank you, Carlina. Those are great words and they mean a lot to us. To lose our art would be to lose our soul for sure. So, uh, so thank you very much. That's certainly the center of what New York is. New York is not just buildings, it's people, and it's not just people, it's their hearts and souls and expression. Thank you. Before we begin our curated visit with Robert, I would like to make a special shout out to my friend and colleague, Carly Graham Garcia, who is also listening in and is now executive director of the Feliciano Center for Entrepreneurship and Innovation at Montclair State University. She was head of external affairs at Google. And it was then when she and I had one of our regular lunches at the club that she proposed we think about getting the club's collection into the arts and culture app. I was wowed by her offer. This followed my own talking about my obsession with the app because it allowed me to see clearly for the first time in the Van Gogh Museum's collection that in his self-portraits, the artist actually frequently painting, painted his eyes in two colors, one blue, and one green. I had just never been able to see that so plainly in front of the artworks in person. How fabulous is it that we can now view digitized versions of the world's greatest art and expand them to see them in detail, never before possible, and to see them in a way that the artists really saw them. And how fabulous is it too that now, from that luncheon and the efforts of so many at the National Arts Club and at Google, 67 works from our collection have been digitally captured preserved forever and available on the arts and culture app and online platform for all in the world to see 
and explore in all their wonderful detail. Our outstanding collection now stands alongside those of the world's leading museums and art collections, including not only the Van Gogh Museum, but also the Modern, the Met, the Louvre, and many, many more. I find myself now visiting the app even more frequently. As Carlina was saying a moment ago, we can't go, we, we can't go to galleries and museums right now, but as, as these in-person visits aren't possible, we can actually view them via, via the Google app. But the most important part of this program is that this collaboration with Google contributes enormously and in perpetuity to helping us achieve our mission as a 501c3, to educate the public about the arts. Thank you, Google. We look forward to a long and fruitful collaboration. Now let's have a treat for the eyes and the soul. Robert, take us on a journey through the art we can now see in all its digitized glory. Thank you, David. Good afternoon, everyone. It is my pleasure to welcome you from my fourth floor workspace in the Tilden Mansion, surrounded by some of the treasures we'll be looking at today. It was an exciting privilege to play an active part in this project. During the months of July and August in 2019, my daily companion was the brilliant operator of the Google art camera, Miguel Buonrostro, a passionate professional Miguel was most generous in offering his expertise and his enthusiasm for the National Arts Club and our collection. Miguel also graciously welcomed members visiting the space who like myself sat in amazement as the Google art camera worked its magic. Our special thanks to you, Miguel, and we look forward to welcoming you back soon. Before we begin our preview, I would like again to thank David Doty for setting this project in motion and our executive director, Ben Hartley, who immediately followed through with complete support. Thanks also to Nadine Heidinger, our senior designer and communications director for making it possible for me to be in two places at once and to Mitch Case, our media and marketing associate for his outstanding work and acting as our technical liaison and in editing our wonderful page. The permanent collection of the National Arts Club is made up of more than 600 works. The core of the collection is the reward of the Artist Life member program. As a consequence, the club now holds one of the finest collections of late 19th and early 20th century American paintings in the country. In addition to outstanding examples of American sculpture by Paul Manship, Victor Brenner, Melvina Hoffman, and Anna Hyatt Huntington, the club also boasts a dynamic collection of works on paper from Rembrandt to Rosenquist, including a complete edition of Goya's Los Caprichos and drawings by Leger, Picasso, Jane Wilson, Lucas Samaris, among others. It is, however, in the art of landscape that our collection excels. And it is a group of these beautiful works that is the focus of our inaugural virtual exhibition, A Century of American Landscape Art. We are especially proud to be able to include three remarkable modern works in this show. Works that confirm the Fine Arts Committee commitment to sustaining our heritage while creating a continue and living legacy in art. Now, please join me as we walk through the gallery. Our first work is by Lois Dodd, the recipient of the 2016 Medal of Honor for Fine Arts, View of Cemetery, Men's Shelter 2018. This is a view Lois sees out of her studio window every day. Lois is a visionary artist of integrity and independence. This striking and deceptively simple canvas is a testament to the artist's ability to dominate intense observation with an economy of means through line and color. A simple brush stroke, a line of light hitting the window frame effortlessly reveals an openness and perspective enhanced by the subtle and elegant shiver of the tree which gives the work a phase of unexpected movement. 
Now we move on to Emil Carlson, Foothills, 1910. Originally known for his impressionistic still lifes, Carlson expanded his work to landscapes late in his career. This example, Foothills, capturing the Berkshires not far from his Connecticut home, shows the artist moving away from a studied method of impressionism to a more natural style, enhanced by a softer, pastel-like palette, which transitions his work to a poetic mode. And personally, I think this is the finest Carlson landscape I've ever encountered. Philip Little, An Upland Meadow, 1917. Though best known for his vibrant scenes of the wharves and harbors of the New England coast, Philip Little created a series of landscapes during his summer stays on McMahon Island off the coast of Maine. These highly personal and individual works demonstrate a poetic exuberance in the handling of light, color, and atmosphere. In 1919, the Boston Globe declared Little one of the best landscape painters in America. Our next work, Philip Leslie Hale, White Roses, dates from 1914. Philip Leslie Hale was one of the most experimental of American artists in the early 20th century evidenced by his interest in neo-impressionism and symbolism. White Roses is a supreme example of the artist's neo-impressionistic, almost metamorphic approach. We see the young woman dissolving into the blinding white light. The sunlight soaks her flowing gown into the rich lawn, allowing her presence to be at one with her companion roses. For many years, Hale was a popular instructor at the Boston Museum School, where Will Barnett was his pupil. Next, we see the wonderful Naples Yellow by Larry Rivers from 1985. Having only one year of formal training under Hans Hoffman, Larry Rivers became one of the most important American artists of the post-war era, creating a personal hybrid of abstract expressionism and narrative pop imagery. In Naples Yellow, through an intelligent and knowing handle of color and composition, at once open and intimate, Rivers allows this canvas to exude immediacy and joy, a pastoral for the 1980s. Daniel Garber from 1908, The Wild Grapevine. Daniel Garber, one of the most interesting and original of the American Impressionist, was a leading figure in the Pennsylvania School of Landscape Painting centered around the village of New Hope. The natural enchantment of his compositions is the fruit of his insistence on working en plein air. In our painting, the device of the grapevine, seemingly decorative, not only reinforces the openness of the sky in the canvas, but also adds an element of unexpected animation, a movement of lyrical exuberance. And now one of my favorite pictures in the collection, Edward Volkert, Morning in the Pasture, Summer Morning, circa 1916. During his lifetime, Volkert became known as America's cattle painter for his numerous depictions of cattle and plowmen in rural settings. His unique style, beautifully demonstrated here, is noted for her, his impressionistic and radiant use of light. Volkert achieves this effect by applying his paint in small dots while maintaining the integrity of form and color. In this painting, he captures a riot of sensations in the curve of the land, the heat of the early sun, the smells of the earth, yet maintaining a pastoral elegance. 
John Costigan, Fields of Goldenrod from 1925. Many of Costigan's composition show the rural life he lived, often with his wife and children as models. As a painter, he stands out for his strong brush strokes and his textured and seemingly organic handling of the paint itself. In Fields of Goldenrod, we also see through light and color and experience a metaphysical sensation, not unlike Philip Hale, where man, nature, and atmosphere exist as a single constant. Wilson Henry Irvine, Woods in November, 1924 through 1925. Associated with the old Lyme colony, Wilson Henry Irvine is best known for his mastery of light and intensity of texture combined with color. All of these elements are evident in Woods in November. See how the intense blue sky lightens the density of the autumnal trees. Despite the looming shadow of modernism and shifting taste, he remained relevant as an impressionist painter until the end of his life. John F. Carlson, Woodland Idol, 1917. John Carlson was one of the most important landscape artists and teachers in the early 20th century. Devoted to pure oil painting, he often experimented with the effects achieved through the use of his palette knife and heavy glazes. This is most effective in his handling of the weight and texture of the snow on and against the trees. Attracted by the unique scenery of the Catskill Mountains, Carlson eventually settled in Woodstock, forming a long-term relationship with the town's artist colony. John Fulton Follinsby, Canal in Winter, 1916. John Follinsby was a member of the Pennsylvania's New Hope Artist Colony. While the majority of his colleagues fixated on the picturesque quality of the surrounding landscape, Follinsby focused on the industrial life of the region, finding powerful and poetic imagery in the canals, factories, and mills. Canal in Winter dates from a period when Follins Follinsby was working in the style of his impressionistic forerunners, yet he stands apart in his use of subtle yet striking brushwork and a remarkable and personal sense and use of color. Our final work is by Will Barnett, the 1990 recipient for the Medal of Honor for Fine Arts. We're looking at Upstairs, created between 1980 and 1991. An extremely dynamic artist, Barnett changed his style significantly throughout his career, with early works influenced by social realism, followed by abstract and stylized figurative work. This deceptively simple painting is an important transitional work, moving the artist from the balanced classicism of the 1970s and 80s into the complex compositions and striking palette of his Beverly series created through the 1990s, and finally a return to pure abstraction in his last years. The controlled geometry, the chill of the air, relieved by the poetic arabesque of the tree branch, are all supported by multiple layers of subtle transforming color. The commanding presence of the house reinforces the isolation of the figure, Emily Dickinson, while at the same time energizing the placement and the freedom of the bird. Thank you for joining me, and I hope you'll visit our arts and culture page again very soon. It is now my pleasure to introduce the Executive Director of the National Arts Club, Mr. Ben Hartley. Robert, 
um, it is always a pleasure to hear you talk about the collection. Uh, you do it with such authority and uh, such generosity. Um, it's really one of the great pleasures to wander through the club, um, to look at these works of art that we now assume um, and just uh, as part of our everyday life. I love sitting next to that Lois Dodd that's in the dining room there, um, a, a sort of a radical departure from what we've shown before. So thank you for introducing all those works into the collection. It's a great collection. I have had the, the joy of having that Barnett in my office for a short while and to look at that work um, up close, the, the same way we can do with the Google Arts and Culture app is really terrific, so thank you. Um, I just wanted to thank everyone, Harvey Epstein. Um, Harvey, as you may or may not know, Harvey uh, generously and, and uh, successfully was able to steer $125,000 grant towards the club, specifically towards our air conditioning. Not this summer, but in summers to come, we'll all be enjoying that. Um, Carlina Rivera, uh, Councilwoman Carlina Rivera, always a passionate supporter of us, uh, the club. So thank them both. I also want to thank David Doty. David really has been a champion in this partnership right from the get-go. It was his relationship with Google that brought them to the club um, under the guidance of Linda Zagaria, our president. Uh, Linda has been a passionate supporter and we greatly appreciate everything uh, she has done over her four years as president, but over the 30 plus years she's been with the club. Um, the Fine Arts Committee and the Curatorial Committee have been enthusiastic supporters. And of course, Robert, Robert, um, where would we be without you? You actually should be in our collection. Maybe we should digitize a version of you to add to those 67 masterpieces, because um, really we could do none of this without you. I also wanted to end by really thanking all of our members our members who have stayed with us, our members who have been passionate supporters of us, who have given us feedback, who have given us um, ideas, who have given us support. Uh, we could do none of this without you. And we greatly thank you for everything you do while we're away, while I'm at home, you're at home. Um, we miss our club, we miss our community. And I've uh, been a recent uh, person to join this community, but it is such a special place. And I know we're all looking forward to getting back together to the bars and the parlors. And so until then, um, I hope that you're all safe, you're all sane, which is also a challenge. Um, and until we can see each other back in the parlors again soon, um, be well, and we look forward to seeing you back soon. And thank you so much, everybody.